Praise be Jesus and Mary. We are at the, uh, well, just a, less than a week from Christmas when our, our Blessed Mother gives us Christ. He's coming to bring us the, the grace of Christmas, to renew the grace of Christmas. This is what, what happens in our liturgical celebrations, that the, those graces that we celebrate, those mysteries that we celebrate are renewed for us. And so Christ comes to renew the grace of, of Christmas for those who prepared during or those who, who were prepared during Advent. And by that I mean both those who prepared themselves, as all of us should have done, and also those who have been prepared, those poor sinners who have been prepared by the, the prayers and sacrifices, sacrifices especially of others. And of the gifts that Christ brings to us, one of the, those that is most longed for is peace. This was something that uh, in the, throughout the Old Testament we find prophecies speaking of the peace that the Messiah is to bring. Isaiah, who we read so often during Advent, prophesied, for every boot of the tramping wa warrior in battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So you know, there will be, when the, the Messiah comes, there will be no more need for, for these means of, of violence because he comes to bring us peace. And many other prophecies also speak of this. The Psalm 71 or, or 72, depending on how you number it. In his days, in his days justice shall spring up and peace till the moon fails. The first reading again of tomorrow's mass says that he himself will be peace. And the father of John the Baptist prophesied that the Messiah would come to give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. But no, and yet we find you know, so many wars. Well, a hundred years ago, when, well, a little over a hundred years ago when World War I started, Everyone was hoping that peace would be, be there by Christmas time, but it was not to be. And so we have this question, if the P Prince of Peace has come, why is there war? And fundamentally, the answer is the same to the answer of why not everyone is saved. Because although Christ offered salvation to all, although he did on his part what was needed to save others, they do not do on their own part what is needed for them to be saved. And so, although Christ has done all that is needed for there to be peace in the world, there is not peace everywhere in the world because we do not do what is needed for peace. And what is it that is needed for peace? Back when World War I, or even before World War I, was breaking out in a speech that was almost uh, prophetic to the, to the cardinals at the consistory in May of 1914, Pope St. Pius X spoke of peace and of what it requires. He began by saying, during these months, the Catholic world, while confirming its own faith, has presented to the suffering human race, the cross of Christ is the only source of peace. He spoke of how much peace was desired during his time, as it is desired now, and how the wisest and most experienced men were devoting themselves to trying to put an end to war. And yet, as we know, they failed to avert the world war that came uh, just at the end of July, just a, a couple of months later. When the slaughter finally ended, these wise men and diplomats formed the, the League of Nations so that disagreements would not lead to another world war. But some, about 20 years later, there was another world war. And since then, since World War II, we haven't had anything else called a world war, and yet we have many wars throughout the world, and sometimes these wars seem so widespread that, as Pope Francis said, it seems that we already have World War III and that you know, we have a war here and a war there, and, and if there is war all over the world, is that not a world war? Why the failure? Why St. Saint, Saint Pius explained it before they started, before, well, even before they, they started to try to, to get peace. This excellent endeavor of working for peace will remain almost a wholly barren if at the same time an attempt is not made to establish in the hearts of men the laws of justice and charity. 
This wasn't uh, a new invention of his. He was simply applying what the prophet Isaiah or Isaiah taught. When the Spirit is poured from on high, and this happened at Pentecost, then justice will dwell in the wilderness and righteousness abide in the fruitful field. And the effect of righteousness will be peace and the fruit of righteousness, quiet, quietness and trust forever. So peace is an effect of righteousness, of justice. And as the, the Psalm says, in his days, justice shall spring up and abundance of peace. There's a, a logical connection between these two because Christ comes to justify the redeemed Justice will spring up, and where justice abounds, then peace will abound. But without justice, there is no peace. And one who does not give God the worship he deserves, however fair he may be to his neighbors, is not fundamentally just because he is denying God his due. Our Lady of Fatima said this on the 13th of July, 1917. She said, the war is going to end, but if people do not cease offending God, a worse one will break out. And the events sadly proved her true. You know, if people continued to, to offend God, they did not become righteous, they were not just, and the consequence was war. It was World War II. Oh, she'd said there, the war is going to end, World War I. And, and why was that? You know, as those of you who were here for the video before the day heard how how oh, Pope Benedict XV had added the invocation Queen of Peace to the litany of Loretto in early May, just eight days before Our Lady began to appear at Fatima. And when she appeared, she told them to pray the rosary every day to obtain peace for the world. And if we meditate the rosary, it teaches us the essentials of the gospel. It teaches us these things, these essentials of the gospel, which we are then to put into practice. It's a, a good practice to meditate uh, the virtues uh, as, you medit as you go through the, the mysteries. There are uh, various lists that assign a virtue to each mystery, a virtue that that mystery especially teaches us. And those who do put it into practice will become just, will cease offending God, and will not be provoking war. And the rosary also is a powerful means of obtaining graces, and one of the graces we most need is that of, of becoming good Christians. Our Lady also asked us at Fatima to offer sacrifices for the conversion of poor sinners. And first and foremost, we do uh, in order to save them uh, from hell, which is a, a horrible place where no one should have to go. But their conversion will also contribute to making the world a more peaceful place. And what worked for obtaining the end of the First World War also works for preventing war and for preventing warlike forms of violence such as, as terrorism, which is such a problem for the world today. And Pope St. Pius went on to say, the peace or the strife of civil society and of the state depend less on those who govern than on the people themselves. When the minds of men are shut out from divine revelation, no longer restrained by the discipline of the Christian law, what wonder if many with blind desire rush headlong down the road to ruin, persuaded by leaders who think of nothing but their own personal interests. And that was so very true of World War I, which started just a couple of months later. It found enthusiastic support in many quarters. Everyone was, was it, or, well, not everyone, but certainly very many people were excited about the war. They were convinced that like the Franco-Prussian War, it would, would soon be over. Everyone would be home for Christmas. and and uh, their country would have won a resounding victory over its enemies. And, but you know, people did not realize how the war would slaughter their young men, how it would impoverish their country, how, and so they did indeed rush headlong into this disaster. And in a democratic society, in a society where people choose their leaders, it's quite true that whether or not the society will have peace depends very much on the people and on their priorities. So what is it that we look for when we elect our leaders? Are, are we a society that's willing uh, to oppress others in order to have uh, our own economic well-being? Are we a society that's willing to sacrifice the lives of the unborn for the sake of men's convenience or, or so that women can have a better, can continue their education and their careers? You know, if we do such things, you know, if a society does such things, how can it expect peace? Pope Pius XII, citing that same passage of Isaiah we heard before in his encyclical 
on the, well, citing in his encyclical on, on the Sacred Heart, that same passage we heard before, the effect of righteousness will be peace, warned that setting aside the, the law of the gospel makes peace worthy of the name, complete the impossible among men. And so we, we have this very tragic condition, you know, a tragic condition which Jesus wept over in, in Jerusalem on Palm Sunday as he was walking down the hill. He saw the, the city, he saw Jerusalem, and, and saw what was going to happen to it. And he, he wept and he said, would that you, even you, had known this day the things that make for peace. Oh, and he went on to predict the siege and the destruction of that city. Now, if only they'd known what they needed for peace, if only they'd accepted him as the Messiah, then they would have indeed had peace, then their city would not have been destroyed. But they rejected him, they rejected his teaching, they rejected the truth, and so they went blindly to their destruction. Also, Pope St. Pius X spoke of this irony, the irony that those same politicians who are so intent on, on obtaining peace see the church as an enemy, whereas the church is really the, their most well, really the indispensable ally in obtaining peace. The Pope explained, the church made by her divine founder, the guardian of charity and truth, is the only power capable of saving the world. Well, do we believe that? Would it not then be better for the world, not only to allow her freely to fulfill her mission, you know, not only to give the church the freedom that it has a right to, but even to help her to do so? Is it, and Yet it is the contrary that happens. The church is too often looked upon as the enemy of the human race when she is in, in reality the mother of civilization. Oh, and today we see the situation is not so very different. The church is looked on as an enemy. The teaching of Christ is looked on as an obstacle to progress because it resists abortion, because it resists the misuse of human sexuality, because it, it condemns, well, because it tells us that, that all people are equal in dignity because it and you no know, it condemns so many other practices which are contrary to justice and therefore destructive of peace and so men yes they want peace but unless they accept the light of the gospel from the church then as Jesus said they do not know the things that make for peace and so you know, as we pray for our, our world that it may receive the light, that it may accept the light of the gospel and so find uh, a peace which is not merely the result of a temporary truce between wars, but a peace which is, is founded in, in, in justice and therefore stable. Uh, the time has come for me to say, O oh, Fatima, farewell. Now, what do I mean by this? Now, soon Christmas is here and our, again Our Lady will offer the Prince of Peace to the Sons of Peace, to those who, who wish peace. But uh, not long after that, I will be, be leaving England uh, because I'm being transferred to, to Italy. So this is going to be my last day with Mary, at least for a while. We don't know uh, when Our Lady might, might bring me back here. Um, but you know, so you know, when I return will we'll depend on, on Our Lady, or if I return. And uh, you know, let us, in the meantime, pray for one another and, and sing heartily, O Fatima, farewell at the end of this day with Mary. Praise be Jesus and Mary.